Okay, so today we're going to be doing a little review of the Kiwitz, Kiwitz Digital Multimeter. And the model number is HT112B. It comes in this little box right here with the instruction manual. We'll be taking a look at that. And it comes in a nice little case here also. It has its own case. I'm going to unzip it and look inside. Yeah, there it is. Comes with a protector on it, and thankfully it did because it's got a big gouge in it there. So let's take this out. There we go. A uh, nice little rubber, rubber type cover. It's not, and you notice it's not, uh, it's not tongue and grooved inside of here though. That might not matter. Let's take this off. Oh, good. That'll work. <laughs> well, that's going to be a little bit more problematic. Let's take this off again. Here we go. Hmm. There we go. I want to see if that scratch right there actually has scratched the... Uh... And let's see. I'll rub that off a little bit. Let's see. Uh, nope, that's just, that's just the glue. Oh, it's fine. I'll go ahead and take it off. There we go. Very nice. It's very light. Uh, let's see here. Nah, 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 nah. Needs to turn the battery on. So there are the batteries in here. There you go. Looks like they give you extra batteries unless it takes them all. Um, 2032 battery, pretty common. We'll see how much it takes in a minute. These leads, uh, I've watched other reviews online, and these leads are not standard size leads that go inside here, so you can't use your other leads in them. See, they're small, and they're not gonna fit. So that's one bad thing about this meter, if that bothers you. Um, I'm probably not gonna care. I have about six of these things I reviewed for Vine now, with various degrees of excitement and disgust. So there's a guy on YouTube who actually does a lot of reviews on these things and I've been in touch with him about this and asked him some questions about it like internal protections. He's an electrician or electronics engineer and, and uh, I'm going to show you what he said. I'm going to ask him if it's okay if I report that to you. Uh, he, he's pretty okay with it and he takes off the back and looks in the, uh, the back here and we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to take this off and point out where the diode protection is. It doesn't have any MOVs, metal oxide varistors in it. It's too small for that, or I guess they could put them in here. It does have a PTC down here, and it has lots of uh, diode protection. Uh, would it protect you on a phase three 8,000 volt surge? Uh, I wouldn't try it. Uh, I really wouldn't. It says it's CAT6 or CAT3 600 volt, and uh, that means it's good for phase three uh, line work, but I wouldn't use it for that. And, uh, that's what this guy said on YouTube too. And I asked him, he said, it's going to be fine for homework and 120 volt and up to 240 volt. He would be, feel safe using it, but it says it's rated for cat six. I mean, cat three, 600 volt. And that's just, uh, that's really pushing it. Uh, okay. So the other thing is this is a 600 milliamp current only. It doesn't go to one amp or 10 amps like a lot of them do. And when I requested this from Vine, I was I overlooked this, or I probably wouldn't have put probably wouldn't have requested it because I wanted to start using this since it's so small. I wanted to use it to do electronics testing for for low voltage DC applications, and they don't ever go over you know two amps or or maybe maybe five amps at the most. Uh, 5 volt, 5 amps, um, 12 volt, 5 amps, you know, uh, and that's about it. So it would be great for me, but it only tests up to 600 milliamps. That's just a little over half an amp. So that's not going to do much for me. But if you're testing electrical equipment, uh, PCBs, really low voltage stuff, low current, it's going to be fine for you. It'll work really good. Uh, this is this is not just, when I saw this, I thought these were just... Uh, screen printed on here but these are actually they don't push in or anything but they are rubber so that's nice 
The meter looks nice. It's laid out nicely. We're going to take it apart a little bit. I'm not going to take the whole thing apart because if you go to YouTube, you can find that that uh, guy, his name's Eddie, who does the multimeter reviews. and He's got all the scopes and everything. He's a wizard. I'm just going to take it apart and show you a little bit about what the protections are. And uh, he's he goes through the same thing and does it. He takes the whole thing apart. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to take the back off. Um, and he, he liked it. He said it, it counted well and it worked fast. There was one reviewer on uh, Amazon who uh, said that it was the continuity check was slow. So when you go to continuity test small, di uh, small PCBs and things like that, you're waiting for a half a second for it to come on. And I, I agree. If it does that, it's, uh, it, it's kind of slow. And I asked Eddie on YouTube about that. And he said he, he went back and tested it again. He said it's pretty fast. He said it, it, it's pretty much instantaneous when he, when he used it. So we're going to test that too. So we'll be back in a little bit. I'm going to take this apart and we're going to put the batteries in it. And I'll show you how that works. Okay, so we're back. And uh, I have torn this little, little uh, meter apart. And I want to also say that if you really want to see this thing torn down and explained in a little bit, a lot better detail, although he doesn't go way into it, uh, Kiss Analog on YouTube tore this thing apart. He also took this board completely out and turned it over. I'm not going to do that because it's already there. But I will show you some things here. Uh, I'm, I uh, like to investigate these little meters for protections because... They say 600 volt cat three protection and that's <laughs> that's stretching it people it really is first of all this uh part of the protections of a multimeter is how they fit together and this has tongue and groove and it fits all the way down inside there see way down in there and that's part of the protection and that's good that's a half an inch you know or almost half an inch and it, and it goes all the way down inside that's good um this is a 600 milliamp fuse it says it right there. Uh, that's not, that's, fuses and multimeters are supposed to be matched to their, they don't have to be, but, you know, most, most of the things that I've done and when I researched it, have found that, you know, if you have a 600 volt multimeter, you need a 600 volt fuse to protect from current, but these don't do that. Uh, you have a diode bridge here, and these are some pretty good looking diodes. I don't know if I can get close enough to, M7s, yeah, they're normal, but at least it's a real diode bridge. Four surrounded by another one in the center. A really good diode bridge, you'll have one that's even bigger in here. Two microprocessors ICs, and they're not the blob type, they're actually, uh, actually, you know, encased in a, in a shell, like they should be. Um, Eddie pointed to these, these are capacitors here, he said, I didn't, I don't really pay attention to it, but he said they were really nice, nice, they were not cheap. And then you have down here on your uh, on your uh, let's see right here. You see these little things here that say 204, 303. Those are those are uh, <clears throat> resistors or melts, some sort of melts. And uh, there's a lot of them there. And so that's that's where they're getting their protection for uh, 600 volts. You know that's. That's what they're trying to do is protect from there. There's nine of them. And then you have a PTC here also. It's not a very big one, but it's, it's, a, PT, it's a PTC, you know. It's on the, uh, it's on the uh, <clears throat> uh, it's on, it's right here on the, uh, yeah, there it's hooked up right here to the current side like it should be. And, uh, or the voltage side like it should be and uh, to protect for surges and things like that, or spikes. I can't remember which one that the PTCs do, but they're a little faster, I believe. And you have more MELFs over here, resistors, diodes. That's how they do this. They protect, they protect this uh, with uh, diodes and resistors. I guess you could just lump them all together. MELFs is a better word because MELFs are diodes and resistors. Uh, and. Uh, and so yeah, so they, they have quite a bit of them here. These M7 diodes, you can see that it says diode three, four. This is a diode bridge, so that's good. They, they've done the, a, good, a good job on that as far as uh, trying to protect it. Cat three, 
600 volt protections, <laughs> don't do it. This fuse is way too small to protect, uh, you know, a, a cascade or a, a, an arc across there and the board doesn't have any cutouts in it. Sometimes on the, on the uh, current size, they'll have cutouts and stuff uh, that protect, uh, or plastic, plastic uh, blades in here that protect from arc jump, you know. Uh, they don't have this here. Um, uh, but it is located way down here, and uh, the case doesn't really have any protections in it, you know, per se. It, it does it does a little bit right here, right here, and it comes all the way down onto this, so there's, there's a little bit there. Um, uh, but like Eddie said over at Kiss Analog and on YouTube, he told me in a, in a message that they're made he would have no problem using this and, and he knows what he's doing I don't but he's he said he would have no problem using this for uh, get down there for uh, household use and things like that I don't know what is going on here anyway and I believe it you know your guy knows what he's doing so I'm not gonna I'm not really gonna try to hit this hit them on this too much as far as uh, as far as uh, protections go, it's a pocket multimeter. It, it doesn't, I don't like it because it says right here, it says it right there, 600 volt cat three. That is three phase power this is supposed to be rated for. So go ahead, plug this lead into this, into the, into the current side here. Please focus into the current side here and, uh, and plug it into the common and go plug it into a 460 volt panel with a three phase motor pulling 60 amps and and 60 horsepower and see what happens to this short it out with 60 amps and 600 volts going through it and see what it does i don't know what it'll do but i'm assuming that it is it's going to smoke you know that's a lot of power for this little tiny thing and and that diode bridge is is good though that's a good diode bridge but you know, on the bigger multimeters and flukes and things like this, these little protections here, these transistors, these MLFs are really big. You know, they're almost the size of these things sometimes. You know, on a Cat 3, 600 volt, they're, they're really big. And the fuses are busman, they're, they're 600 volt fuses. And, you know, um, this is really small though. Okay, so that's about it for this. I'm going to put this back together. It goes together really nicely. It's it's a solid little unit. It, it really is. And and I'm going to say something else when I get done putting this back together. And we're going to turn it on and just mess with it a little bit. Okay, so we have the cover back on it. And uh, it comes with, it uses these, these uh, uh, CR2032 very common and cheap uh, to buy 3-volt batteries. And they were nice enough to just to not give you two of them, but to give you four of them. And it takes two. So that's pretty nice. Um, I don't know if they need to do that or not from a marketing perspective because you're probably going to lose them anyway. But it was nice of them to do that. I mean, they're trying to do—they're trying to run a business, you know. And they're doing a good job. They're, they're uh, you know, trying to offer the customer something that the customer will like, and that's good. And so uh, I'm going to put these in now, and uh, make sure you get the polarity right on these. I'm not sure which way they go up. I think they go up positive up as, as they all do. And uh, just put them in like this, not like that. There you go. A little spring right there. There you go. It just came on, so I got it in right. There we go. I'm going to turn it off. Let's see. Let's see if we can turn this off somehow. Hmm. Well, oh, there we go. Oh, it actually pushed. Okay, well, there's there you go. This actually, this is not just this. I thought this was an LCD button when I first saw it on the website, and it's not. These are actually buttons that you push, and they click, and they are really nice. They're rubberized, small, tactile, and they uh, sound really good. You know, they're they're positive. Although this one is kind of. Yeah, they're good. They feel pretty good. So I have it all back together. I'm gonna put the battery panel back on. It's got a metal insert, brass insert for the screw for the battery compartment. There's no stand on it. 
So if you were looking for a stand to set it up, uh, it's not there. Um, again, it's a very thin, uh, compact device, and they're trying to save space. It's a pocket multimeter. Um, I still don't like the 600 volt rating on this, but Cat 3 rating. Cat 2 would be fine for this thing. It's, that's what it's built for is Cat 2. Even Cat 1, 600, or low voltage, low voltage, uh, low voltage DC work is where this is going to shine. And everybody that is reviewing it pretty much says that. So uh, that's a pretty neat meter. And what we're going to do here is I want to test the continuity. I'm not going to do anything else with this. I might, I might show you how it works. I put it up to a, well, I'll do it right now. Let's just, I haven't even looked at how to, how to work it really. So there it is. It's a, it's a pretty decent, um, it's a pretty decent, uh, uh, you know, when, when I'm holding it like this, you can't see it. You really can't when you're looking down on it. I can't see it right now. I have to turn it like this in order to see it right about there is where it's best. So it's not a really high resolution screen or anything. It's an LED screen. I guess you'd call it LCD. Um, it's it's not really that easy to see. And I don't like that. I have to, you know, I'm looking down at my camera, through my camera, and I'm looking at it right now, and it's it's kind of faded out, and I'm not really liking it that much. I have to turn it like this. Actually, it's okay, because when you put it down on the flat like this, I can see it perfectly, and so can you. The camera's reflecting exactly how it looks. But if you pick it up and put it perpendicular to your eyes, it fades out. And that's kind of strange. So you got to kind of hold it flat in order to see it, you know. Uh, you want to, you, you know, you can see it pretty good like that too. I want to turn this light off the backlight. There, it's it's the same thing. You can see how it fades away if you're holding it up and looking straight at it. You can't even see it. You have to hold it down like this in order to see it. And I guess that's okay. Uh, that kind of bothers me though. When it's down like this, I can see it at all angles. You know, I can see when I look right over it, I can see it. It's really strange. When I, when you're holding it like this, you can see the the angle that, you know, it's pretty easy to see, but if you tilt it up, it goes away. That's, that's kind of weird.